celebrating International Workers' Day. It's a day to remember everything that the Labour movement has already won and everything that we have yet to achieve. Because it was the organised workers who came before us who won the rights that we have today. The right to holidays, to sick pay, to the weekends. But comrades, you don't need me to tell you that conditions for the working class are getting worse. Whether it's key workers going from being clapped by this government to completely forgotten, wages not keeping up with inflation, pensions under threat, the gig economy like Uber and Deliveroo ripping up our workers' rights. More than a decade into Tory austerity, the cuts continue to bite and there are still more yet to come. I speak to people in my constituency of Nottingham East every day and more and more people are telling me that they just cannot cope. A pensioner who can't afford her heating bill. A single mum who can only feed her kids with the help of a food bank. A man whose only internet access is at a library that might soon be closed. And I represent all of their concerns. In some cases, my office and I are able to win small victories. In others, I hope that we can win bigger ones, like working with the Save Our Libraries campaign and with the council to keep our libraries open. But in far too many cases, this system is rigged against people. So we have to get rid of this lying, corrupt government that is run by the rich in the interests of the rich. Yes. Comrades, in dark times, solidarity between each other is more important than ever. Remember, it was workers who built this society, who run our society, who have the power to transform our society for good. So today is a day to vent our anger, to vent our anger at the government for making workers poorer, at bosses for exploiting workers' labour, at the super rich, for hoarding wealth and power to the detriment of everybody else. But it's also a day to stand in solidarity with workers across the world as they face brutal threats. The workers of Ukraine against the unprovoked illegal invasion of, by Putin. And all those across the world who are displaced by war and persecution, who are now refugees seeking sanctuary. Workers in the Global South who are facing COVID without vaccines because Western governments refuse to waive patents. Or workers in the unbearable heat and environmental degradation because of a climate crisis that they did not cause. Workers whose homes have been lost in racist demolitions from India to Palestine. And workers who can't afford food and energy bills because of the failures of market capitalism to serve all of our needs. Our problems are interconnected, and so must, me, so must we be. Our opponents, whether it's free market capitalists or the far right, they organise across borders. So must we work together as one Labour movement. I want to finish with a quote by Rosa Luxemburg, which reminds us why we mark May Day every year. She said over 100 years ago in 1894, as long as, the class, as long as the struggle of workers against the ruling class continues, as long as all demands are not met, May Day will be a yearly expression of these demands. And when better days dawn, when the working class of the world has won its deliverance, then too humanity will probably celebrate May Day in honour of, of the bitter struggles and the many sufferings of the past. I hope that one day we'll celebrate that May Day together under socialism. Solidarity. Thank you, Nadia. Um, continuing with our international theme, I'm really pleased to introduce Shabir Laka from